Austin 316 says I just whipped your ass. Finally. The Hitting the Turnbuckle Podcast. First come back. Give me a hell yeah. Yes, everybody, welcome to the Hit in the Turnbuckle podcast, the extra show. I finally get to host one of these extra shows with my good friend Munzi. How are you, mate? You good? Yeah, good. You? I'm all right, mate. I'm all right. It's been a, it's been a busy old day, mate, but I'm good. It's good to sit here and chat some wrestling. Uh, and what a person we get to sit down and chat with someone that I've seen wrestle, someone that I've spoke to on the Hit in the Turnbuckle podcast uh, before, Mr. CJ Carter, all the way from Ignite <laughs> Wrestling Pro. How are you, buddy? Hey man, yeah, yeah, I'm good. Good to speak to you again and see you, you know. It's live good, mate. And, live and in I, person. I know, mate. I know you get to see my ugly mug, <laughs> mate. But uh, CJ, last time I, I spoke to you, mate, you were wrestling. Um, yeah. obviously, obviously, since then, retirement's happened. Obviously, still involved with Ignite Wrestling Pro. Just catch our listeners up to speed, mate, with what you're up to now. What's happened since we last spoke to you? Probably about three months ago now. Because, uh, obviously, I know you're, you're, you're still running the wrestling promotion. But your in-ring career has halted. Uh, just to explain to us what life is right now. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, when you came to see Ignite, you know, and, uh, you know, I was wrestling Taylor James on that one. At that point, I didn't, you know, I was I was struggling with a pretty bad back injury. I, I was told that I had some damage to the discs in my back, but I wasn't aware of quite how bad it was. But I was, it was you know, at that point, that was, I think that was May last year, right? So at that point, I was kind of collapsing on a semi-regular basis and couldn't, was struggling to walk and was losing the feeling in my legs and starting, you know, it was, it, it was obvious I was having some kind of, you know, nerve damage in my legs. So I went and got an MRI scan and then, yeah, that, that came back to show some pretty extensive damage to the discs in my back. So there's actually 10 discs that are damaged in my back, but um, there's there's two or three in my lower back that were, were just kind of in such a bad way that I was told that you know, if, I, if, if I was going to carry on wrestling, that it's going to end up with, you know, permanent damage and potentially lose the feeling in my legs completely. So wow. kind of made, yeah, it was once I was given that, it was like, okay, fine <laughs> everything is probably fine. <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah it was you know it was a difficult decision but it was a quick decision um it didn't take me long to come to the conclusion that i think it's, it's time to kind of call it a day in the ring so that happened between the may show that you saw mm -hmm. and then what i decided would be my last match which is was in september which was also against <laughs> taylor so Wow, was that um, was that a, was that a risk taking that match, CJ? Was it? Does that go through your head once you once you hear all the stuff of like what you've been told and stuff? You're thinking, obviously, you want to. I get why you wanted to have one last match, but obviously, mm -hmm. with what you've been told about your injuries, does that play into your thought process? Obviously, you know, you're someone that know you know how to wrestle, mate. You know how to plan matches. What's the thought process that goes through your head once you know about these injuries and you still got to go out there and put on a match one last time? Yeah, I mean. I, I mean, look, I, I said to, I was seeing a, an osteopath at the time and a chiropractor and the osteopath was, was the one I was seeing kind of regularly. And she, she was the one who kind of fed my results back to me. And she said to me, look, you, you need to stop and you need to stop now. And I had some pretty, I had some pretty decent matches lined up to be honest. I was holding four belts at the time <laughs> and I really wanted to be able to drop those belts back. So I had the Jurassic Pro Championship at the time. I had a DOA Championship and RCWA Championship and the United Championship. And um, and I actually had a match with Mark Haskins lined up for United for that for that championship, which you know Haskins is one of my idols, and um, I wrestled him once before, but it was you know in 2017, so it was it was a long time ago, and I felt like I was you know a much higher standard than I was in 2017, and and probably could have had one of the best matches of my entire career. So I really wanted that match, but I was it was stressed to me that you know every bump I was taking from that point on. Was a was a serious risk and a potential that I could you know because if I the, the problem was the damage was so bad in my discs that if I burst one of the discs and then that ends up pressing on a on a nerve in my back potentially that wouldn't you know ever be uh, repairable or or ever go back to anywhere close to 100 percent and I could be looking at sort of like mobility issues for the rest of my life so I was just like ah it was, it was a tough decision but I, I kind of said to her at the time like look I have to have I have to have this last match in in september with taylor because i know it was in my hometown it was in my own promotion uh you know we built to it for 
since show one basically at Ignites, we built to it from the October previous to that September, so nearly a whole year's worth of build. And I kind of said, look, if I'm going to have one last match, it's got to be in my hometown, and I'm willing to take that risk like one more time, but only one more time. So yeah, I had to. I kind of handed all the belts back to all the other promotions. Didn't get my match with Haskins, sadly, but I just I made that deci decision that yeah, I would take that risk just one more time in that match, and you know, it could have been one more bump that was the final straw, or it could have been 10, 20, 15, 30 more bumps. You never know if it's going to be one more or 50 more. Mm. But, you know, I came out of the match okay. So <laughs> I just yeah. I, I had to have that match. There was just no way I couldn't have that match. I just, especially with it being at Ignite, I just had, to, you know. Yeah, no. No, mate, honestly, I get it, mate. Honestly, I, I've seen you wrestle. It, must, it can't have been easy uh, for you to, to end it like that. But obviously now, you're just, obviously, you're still very heavily involved in uh, in wrestling. How have you found the transition over to, obviously, like, running everything behind the scene? Obviously, I know you were a very busy man whilst you were wrestling. So, obviously, yeah. you've taken on a lot more now. How are you finding it? What are Ignite up to? The promotion, mate. Every time I look at it, I mean, I'm hoping to get to the next show all being well. It just seems yeah. to be getting bigger and bigger. And the UK scene, mate, obviously, there's... Every weekend I'm seeing, like, I think there's one at Bedford this weekend. I think, obviously, you guys got yeah. another show coming up in a couple of months. The UK scene right now, mate, seems to be the best it's ever been. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting because I think people were saying that, you know, initially WWE NXT UK was going to be the death of the scene. And obviously that never turned out to happen. And obviously NXT UK isn't really around in its, you know, previous form anymore. But, you know, everyone was sure that that would be the end of it um i think people you know people have, have said for years that you know progress and ref pro being so big would you know be the kind of death now for the smaller promotions that's never been the case and you know even though there is no nxt uk at the moment and potentially you know depending on who you speak to maybe progress isn't at the height it was once at i think you're right that spread across the entire scene if you look at it as a whole I don't think as many promotions have ever been as successful as they are at the moment in terms of bringing in the numbers because, you know, I'm seeing promotions that I've previously wrestled for and promotions that, you know, still I still have friends in the business and they wrestle for. And we're, and we're talking like 200, 300, 400 people at, at what you would you know, probably term as small time promotion. Some, you know, that we're not talking Rev Pro or Progress or TNT here or you know, 1PW, and this, and they're drawing in the several hundreds of people in these venues on a regular basis. Mm. Um, and, and it's great that that many people want to come out that regularly to watch wrestling at a local level. Which Do you, know, do you think that's because of the price, though, do you reckon, because of all the... Everyone's not got as much money as they used to, do you know what I mean, the recession and stuff. Do you think that helped that it's cheap, they're cheaper tickets or it's not? Not I don't really. know. I mean, it's funny you say that because so you know with Ignite, I've always wanted it to be a local promotion for the local community. Yeah. You know, I'm from Bournemouth. I was born there. My family lived there. My friends lived there, um, and I just wanted to give something back. And so we've tried to keep our tickets really affordable, and we I, we haven't actually ever put our prices up. So mm -hmm. and even when we, even when I ran Clash there, for example, um, you know, my prices have stayed the same since 2018. So um you can imagine with everything else going up it's been quite hard to do that but for that exact reason you know i, I just oh with everything else going up and people struggling to do certain things i want people to have that outlet with wrestling i want them to be able to come and afford to do it no matter what's going on and bring their kids and bring that whole family and i think it is afford you know i'd like to think that most of the shows that are going on are affordable for families mm -hmm. and that probably does help fill, fill up because you know not everything is affordable anymore um but yeah, look, there's some great wrestling going on. And you know, when I started, I started wrestling um, in 2010, and that you know, there wasn't even 10 percent of the promotions that that there is now. There, there are so many opportunities for the wrestlers on the scene, but also for the fans in local areas to go to their local promotion and support their local promotion. Um, you know local places like UBW that, that run in like the Stevenage area and then you've got Sacrifice which you mentioned that's on next Friday or well, this Friday coming um, and yeah I mean in terms of Ignite we have steadily been kind of growing you know we, we kind of came out of the pandemic and we were doing okay doing decent numbers um, every show seems to be just just creeping in a little bit more and the, the one that we just did 
couple of weeks ago, it was actually our highest ever ticket sales. So, um, I mean, we're going to get to the point where in the venue we're at, I don't know if we can get that many more in, but we'll try. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, next next show's April 30th. So, yeah, it'd be great to see you if you could come down. We've got Warren Banks back on that one. He's returning. Um, he did our first few shows um, and but hasn't been back since. Um, like, I think he was on, was he? No. Was it yeah May right? He was the mm-hmm. one. He was May. there, mate. Yep, yeah, he was there yeah, when I was there, and then we interviewed him a couple of weeks after. Exactly. So that's the last time we we had him. So he's back after that time, and then we've got you know Taylor James is is, is wrestling Nino Bryant, who's Bournemouth hometown boy, and I'm um, slam myself in the middle as a special guest referee. Special referee, I saw that. Yeah, I, I got to do something now. I got, <laughs> yeah. I got, to myself I got to find a reason to get in the ring, haven't I? <laughs> no, mate, you know, um. How big do you want Ignite to go now, mate? Obviously, now you're, you're sitting behind the scenes. Mm. Is there going to come a stage? Like you say, I mean, I saw like the pictures from the last show that you put on in Bourne Wood. Um, like I said, the UK scene is getting a lot bigger. Do you ever envisage maybe taking it on the road and growing it a little? Obviously, you'll always be at Bourne Wood. I think that's fantastic. Local guy, local wrestling, you know what I mean? That is fantastic. And I, th- But do you ever envision maybe, hey, do you know what? Let's go and try one of these little bigger venues and see... Yeah, I'm not talking massive. I'm totally talking yeah, yeah. another 200 seats. Is that something that could happen down the road? Oh, absolutely, man. That's my dream, man. That really is my dream. Um, you know, look, as a kid, all I ever wanted to do was wrestle. But also, to be honest, I always wanted to have my own promotion. I think everyone does, right? Every wrestling fan dreams of having their own promotion, I think. And um, I don't know. I'm not quite... I'm not quite- still waiting. <laughs> when I was a kid, I had my little figure feds. I always, you know, I, I used to put my little storylines and my wrestling figures. And like now, I'm, now I'm, you know, now I'm older. I'm living out my dream, man. And um, and my goal always was when I finished wrestling to want to do this. It just came a bit earlier than I was hoping for, to be honest. But yeah, I really do want to put my all into this now. Now that I'm not, you know, wrestling every weekend and and gone Friday, Saturday, Sunday every weekend, I can put even more time into it and more time into the promotion of it. And I, I w- I'll never leave Bournemouth. I'll, you know, I always want to make sure I'm running shows there. But I would love. I think probably maximum capacity where we are at the moment is probably like 200 people in there, mm-hmm. and I don't think we could ever get more than that. Um, so I would, I would love to maybe branch out and and try like a venue, a 300 venue, a 400 venue, and you know, see if we could, you know, branch around and and maybe not tour the country, but you know, in the surrounding areas for sure. Yeah, yeah. tour the south, uh, yeah, exactly. And, and I would love, I would love to make it my, you know, my full time profession, you know, eventually, um, and you know, sell a thousand tickets. I'd love to get to where progress are. I'd love to get to the point where you can do eight hundred, nine hundred, a thousand plus tickets, and you can run a monthly show doing that every month. You know, that's the dream. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You, would there would be like a cross promotion, CJ? Like, obviously, all these great, like you got Progress, you got yourself. There's all these great uh, companies going. I asked this on the the last uh, hitting the turnbuckle podcast we've done when we were talking about it. Could there ever be like, you know, you've got back in the day, we all know the story about how WWE and Vince McMahon bought up all the territories. I'm not saying on that scale, but if all the UK UK guys, I've always thought this, if they ever got together. You know, everyone always says, wouldn't it be good to have like a UK version of WWE or WCW back in the day or ADW? Do you ever envision something where that could happen? Where all you guys put your heads together and go, do you know what? We've got such a strong product in the UK. Mm. Let's put us all together. Like a super show, right? Like yeah, some guy, I think like that'd some... be a ma- Honestly, I'd pay good money yeah. to watch that. I, I think it would. I think it would work brilliantly. I guess the, the problem you're going to have, and it's been done on, on some scales, UBW and Sacrifice have done joint shows and this Friday. Sacrifice and Future are doing a joint show. So it, it has happened, but I would love to see like a proper super show where you get, uh, you know, six promotions, you know, and you, maybe you could run it once or twice a year. Um, there are, there was something similar to this. In, I think it was 2018 or 2019, and I, I wrestled on it actually as part So because Clash were one of the promotions that we used. Um, so I think it was... And it was it was pro wrestling clash. Um, Breed were in it at the time. DNA were in it. Um, a few other promotions. I can't remember what all six of them were. And it was up north, and it was in Sheffield. And, and I wrestled on that as you know representative of Clash at the time. Um, but it was never done again. And I don't know why. I'm not sure why. I mean, I guess the the problem you're always going to find is that 
trying to often trying to get even two or three people in wrestling to work together and have the same ideas <laughs> and agree on something is ne yeah, next to impossible. So trying to get six people to do it on a regular basis is going you know it's always going to be hard and you're always going to have arguments over whose guy goes over because it's going to yeah. be like, I want to take my guy and he's a champion so he's got you know he can't lose because it's not really very good for us if he loses and then you can't really have titles on the line because you don't really, really want to be dropping titles to another promotion necessarily but yeah. i think if you could make it work and get around those complications there's definitely money in that and i think fans would love to see that right i, I would love to be able to yeah. pull something together yeah, no, yeah, no, mm. most definitely. I, I've asked enough questions, Munzi, mate. This is your show as well, buddy. I know you got a, a <laughs> shed ton of questions to ask CJ, mate. I'll, I'll shut up for a bit. <laughs> um, like I asked um, Corey last week, who would be his favorite, like dream opponent? But as you're not wrestling, well, we can still do that. So yeah. we'll, we'll go with who would who would have been your dream opponent, and then like because you're GM, who would be your dream booking? Oh, okay, so I mean, I guess someone I, I was I was I re like wanted to wrestle. More than anything was Haskins. That's why. That's why I'll be honest with you. It pained me so much to have to give that match up and not and not do that match. And that you know that is honestly how serious an injury it was and how serious I took it because that was not an easy one to give up. And I think if I could have you know any match, it would, he would certainly be up there. And, it, and if not Haskins, then Osprey. I would. God, I would love to get in there with Osprey. Yeah, course, yeah. yeah I think everyone, I think that's everyone's dream at the moment on this thing, right? It seems it seems like he's coming back onto the scene to try and give the fans some dream matches with British wrestlers at the moment. Because it seems like there's a lot of British wrestlers kind of either calling him out or, or wanting to start feuds with him. And he's obviously helped put um, Oku on the map. I think you know that. I think that that match at Rev Pro they had. It's obviously done wonders for him because then he ended up on Jericho's podcast and over on PWG. So, um, and I, it feels like you know Will's wanting to come over and give something back to the scene at the moment. It seems and trying, you know, trying to find some you know talent over here that he can have some great matches with him in the spotlight. So it doesn't surprise me that Corey said that as well. But um, yeah, I mean, either Haskins or Osprey, even someone, even someone like like Doug Williams, to be honest, you know, I grew up watching that kind of era of British wrestling and, and to me, he's still an absolute legend. So, um, yeah, any one of those three would be a dream match for me, to be honest. Um, what, what would be your dream booking? Like if you had to say you had this amount of money and you know, use anyone, you could book anyone. Literally, any anyone. We're not just talking British wrestlers here, right? Like, yeah, could be, yeah, no, 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 anyone. Yeah. Oh, wow. Christ. Um, I mean, the two best wrestlers in the world for me right now, I'd have to say, are Omega and Danielson. So, like, if I had, if money, you was might, more, you might have to move out of Bournemouth to book that one, mate. I know. That. <laughs> That's why I asked. That's why I asked. I don't think. Yeah, I think we might need to sell more than two hundred tickets for that one. But, um, uh, I mean, yeah, I would love to see that live and love to book that on a, you know that would be my dream if i could build a promotion that could have that 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 level of star quality um and sell god i mean we got to be talking like doing wembley arena at that point right like we're talking forget a thousand people we're talking ten thousand people minimum there right like yeah. um yeah. but yeah yeah, um, CJ, how do you think the uh, state of wrestling is right now, mate? Obviously, you know, you see it from a, an, uh, an English side. Obviously, we watch, mm. obviously, we all watch WWE and I watch a little bit of AEW now. There's more eyes on wrestling right now, I'd say, but it's WrestleMania season. You know, everyone's trying to watch wrestling. A lot of people are talking about it. What do you see as the state of wrestling this side of the pond and obviously over in the States? Are you like, are you more afraid to WWE, AEW? You know, because I know a lot of the old, a lot of the UK guys right now are in nxt yeah yeah i mean look do you know, do you know what's funny is you know i brought up a, a few minutes ago is that people were convinced that nxt uk was going to be the death of the scene like I, mm -hmm. everyone was saying that's it they've signed up all the best talents progress are going to be dead in the water what are they going to do without all of their guys that they've just signed up and and here we are what like three four years later and i i, I honestly don't think the scene has ever been uh has ever been better in terms of the amount of places for people to wrestle and, and what what happened when nxt uk came along and took up all of those names all it done was open the door for a whole load of you know new talent to come through and gave them opportunities to then move up to that next level and then the level that they were at opportunities open there and you need that you you need to have people moving up for new people to come in because if that never happens you're never going to get new blood coming through they're never going to get the chances 
And I actually think that, you know, NXT coming along and signing up those guys really did. I think it helped push the scene on, you know, I really, I really, I really do. Um, and I know a lot of people complain about progress now that it's not the same as it used to be and the stars aren't, you know, the same level of quality, but I, I don't know. I've got to disagree. I think the match quality is as good now, if not better than it's ever been. I'm also a massive, to me, I'm a big Rev Pro fan. I, I've been for a long time. I, and I, I don't think we've ever seen the level of quality of wrestling there that we're seeing now. I mean, they're not, I guess they're not always bringing in as many of the big, you know, New Japan guys at, at the moment. But, you know, the, the British guys that they're using, they're some of the best wrestlers that this country's ever has ever put out, you know. And um, I, it just, people always want to write off the British British scene, always. And I, But I honestly just think that every year it just kind of goes up a level, up a level, up a level. And that, it just goes to show that a small promotion like the one I run that can do nearly 200 people on a semi-regular basis, you know, it just the appetite's there. People want to come and see it. Um, Are yeah. you surprised no more UK guys have hit the scene? And don't get me wrong, I know they've all hit the scene, but I'm talking. You remember back in the day, obviously, everyone knows the British Bulldog, but all the old school mm -hmm. wrestling fans out there. Obviously, you've had some great people. Wade Barrett went to WWE. Are you surprised though, that no one's really like hit the heights? Obviously, I know I understand that you've got you've got some old uh, WWE UK guys in NXT right now. Has it shocked you though that none of them, you know, have ever gone? We're talking like holding world titles in AEW, WWE, because like you say, some of them, mate, are incredibly talented, but they just is it because they're English that they kind of don't get that push that the American mm -hmm. guys have got? I mean, it's possible. I mean, it depends what level you're talking at, right? Because you've got Pete mm. Dunn over there at the moment, and you know. And he's managed to go through from this team. You know, um, I, remember, I remember wrestling on shows with Pete Dunne in 2010 in front of a couple of hundred people. And he's gone from yeah. that to like... Drew McIntyre, I suppose. You know what I mean? Do, do you know what I mean? And, and look, you could argue that Will Ospreay is the biggest independent talent on you know in the world at the moment. You know, one of the biggest unsigned... Well, he's signed to the New Japan, right? But, you know, not, sign, not signed to AEW or WWE. But he's got to be the biggest talent out there currently surely and you know british guy um but i know what you mean like none of the really none of the guys that came from nxt uk in, in that period that it was around have really broken onto like a raw or smackdown in a big way uh, right? that's yeah that's more what i, I mean, mean like I know yeah what you mean. and pete, pete, dunn's probably, pete dunn's probably the only one at the moment that really has walter as well right but he's not british is he but he was on nxt mm. uk mm -hmm. i don't know i'm not sure why that is i i think that you know uh i think you could see uh, pretty deadly going up to the, they've been doing some of the main roster stuff, right? I'm sure that, or they, they just been stuck on NXT. They, they moved. Mainly they, NXT. They, 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 yeah. Didn't they do a dark match or something on SmackDown? I think I'm sure they've done a dark. Yeah. Munzi might know. He might know better than me. Mate, I think that those two, honestly, give them a bit of time. I truly believe that they will be the two that more so than anyone else will crack it. Because you know, I, I can't say enough good things about them both, um, especially Sam. Like I'm, I, I've been a huge fan of Sam for so long, and um, he was when I ran Clash. He was our champion at Clash, and you know, I wrestled him a number of times. One of the nicest people you'll ever meet, and I think one of the you know most talented wrestlers that there is. And, you know, I've seen, and I don't watch an awful lot of WWE at the moment. I'll be honest. I'm more of an AEW guy. But, you know, I have seen their stuff and I have seen them pop up and I've watched their stuff from NXT. And I just think they stand out. They've got charisma. They've got a great look. Um, mm. They, you know, they've got a different kind of unique style in the ring. And, yeah, I, I do think you might see them crack it. Maybe on the tag division, maybe not as singles, possibly. And I'm just, yeah, I'm not really sure why, not, like, why they haven't had that next kind of breakthrough big UK star. I guess Barrett would be the, Barrett, Sheamus would be the last ones, right? Mm. Um, I always thought Barrett should have done more. I'll be honest. I, I always thought yeah. that, that that was there for the taking. When that, when Nexus first came from Nexus, mate, the invasion with John Cena on Raw, when they actually obliterated everyone on that roster, I thought, wow, this is like they were yeah. trying to kind of do like an a modern NWO kind of thing. Then, weren't yeah. they? It, it, it worked invested. for a few months. I was well. invested at the time, and I, I haven't really regularly watched WWE for quite a while. And I was in and out at that point, but I was like, wow, this could be something real special. When they did that whole um, you know, thing at the end of Raw where they tore the ring up and they, you know, and they, and it was like, whoa, this is different. This is cool. And, you know, Barrett was like a, the top talent of, of that group. 
I think they wasted that. I really don't, I don't know why they didn't go all in on him there, but mm. I don't know. Seems it was, w- sorry, it seems that WWE don't want to do it, does it? It just seems like yeah, it's weird. You know, now you've got AEW there, then maybe you'd be better off going to AEW. Like I said to Corey when he we asked him where did he want to go, he wants to go to New Japan. But yeah, you yeah. know, he I said to him, like, you know, you're better off going AEW New Japan before you go WWE because then you know, look at look, look, like it's for start for example, um Pete Dunn. It was brilliant in NXT with Bruise away, and then he moved him up and now you know, I mean he's not he don't suit a tag team. He's better off he'd be better off being on his own. But yeah. maybe it's just the way WWE will work, is it as you say. It's strange. They don't seem to you they don't ever seem to want to go all in on the British stars, do they? They're happy to have them there so they can use them probably to market to us over here. They want them yeah, around yeah, so they can yeah, do the UK yeah. show. And they can, you know, they did the Cardiff show, and they they had um, uh, <coughs> Drew McIntyre in the main event of that, right? Um, and everyone thought that they were going to put the belt on Drew McIntyre there. I mean, I never thought they would for that for that reason. They feel that they 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 want them on the shows so they can do those tours, so they can market to the European audience. But I don't know why they don't want to just go all in on someone. Mm. Um, strange. I don't know. Yeah, AEW's kind of um, Munji. I know you you got your finger on the pulse, mate. I don't watch loads of AEW right now for whatever reason, though. They seem to they're always going to take a dip in what they were doing. I mean, I know there's some big announcements like they're doing some other TV deal. Do you think Munji? Uh, obviously, CJ, you watch it. Do you think that they're the modern TNA? I think it's funny because you get a lot of people when my mates do this. Is where get a lot of people just comparing them to WCW. Yeah. Loads of the WCW yeah. comparison, and then you get some people comparing them to TNA. And I, I think, look, I think both are and slightly. The only unfair. reason I say that is because they seem to be going down the same path every couple of weeks. We've got a huge announcement. They've yeah. moved TV channels more times than I've had hot dinners, you know. So you, you never like, and that was I remember the TNA days. Oh, they were on Spike, they're on Bravo, they're on this, you know, on Discovery Channel. You know, Tony Khan, he, he seems to have just keeps he gets distracted by what WWE are doing. Concentrate on what you're doing. Build your product, build your brand, and let the wrestling do the talking for itself. And in a year's time, you might look around and go, do you know what? We've actually built our own stars here. You know, like WWE mm-hmm. had to back in the day. They had to build Austin. They had to build Rock because WCW were kicking their ass. AEW seems to be more focused on what WWE are doing. And I, I personally think it's, it's to the detriment of their product at the moment. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to argue with that, to be honest. I have this kind of debate with some of my friends a lot. Um you know, I do I do wonder whether either AEW or WWE see themselves in the war that the fans see them in. I think, you know, ultimately, I think AEW are probably happy to be turning over whatever profit they're making doing half decent numbers on TV. Granted, you know, they were breaking the one million week, you know, weekly for a while, and they don't. It seems to be rarely hitting that anymore. It's more around the eight hundred, nine hundred thousand range. But you know, ultimately, and then obviously they're not doing the same kind of. Um, you know, ratings they were when, when Jericho first came in at the beginning or when Punk first came in, you know, when they were talking about all the demos, you know, and, you know, he was doing the demo God thing and they have never quite reached back to that level. I thought, you know, when Punk came in, I really thought that that could have been a catalyst to push him on to, you know, closer to what WWE do in terms of numbers, but I, I just, know, they never seem to really get a, they seem to get a good thing going for a little bit and then they never they, seem to know how to push it on and take seem it. To like, they seem to do, they seem to like, test like they do a story and then they'll test it and if it don't work they'll just can it they don't yeah. see it through mm-hmm. do you Great know what I mean point. the storylines yeah. they don't they don't see them through um but like when first AEW first started you had Moxley turning up for oh, you know this is something different than what but then as soon as Cody to be fair as soon as Cody Rhodes left I think it's gone a bit downhill so I think someone's backstage you're is the just, only one you're not the only one to say that yeah <laughs> he's just left and then now you're hearing Kenny Omega might be going yeah, so I've heard that as well. Something's happened, I mean, something's happened backstage, which, uh, you know. The thing is, for me, I, I tend to watch it because I just, I love the quality of the yeah. level of wrestling you get out of the matches, right? And look, I would love to be able to get invested in stories like I did when I was younger with, you know, my, my era was the actual era, right? And I, and I would, God, I would love to get invested in stories like that again. I'm not sure, other than maybe the story that's going on in WWE at the moment with Sammy and, and Roman. I don't know. You never seem to get those stories that you can really invest in anymore. And mm-hmm. AEW certainly don't seem to, to do them for whatever reason. No. They, they, they run them for like a couple of weeks and then they get bored of them and then it just disappears and vanishes. And I don't think it helps that... It's, I find it really odd the way they do their TV. And I think it's because they do one live and one tape. But you don't get the same wrestlers on the show two <laughs> weeks in a row. 
you get a story maybe one week and you don't get the continuation of that story for like six weeks or something like that. And it's, it's really odd. Yeah. And, then, yeah. and then you get a blow off match on the Friday rampage and no one sees it. And then it's, it is, it is very disjointed in terms of the way they seem to line their stories up and do their booking, which can be super frustrating. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, for me, just the, the quality of wrestling there is just it's incredible. Mm. They do have um, they do have good matches. Um, CJ, talking of matches, mate, I don't I don't get. To, I've spoke to a few wrestlers in the past. I don't expect you to tell me any trade secrets here, but I've always <laughs> wanted to know how hard is it? Like this is kind of a double barrel question. Uh, first of all, how hard is it to plan a match? How hard is it to call a match? I'm when I went to your show. What I loved about being, I was literally on the. I can put my hand out, and pretty much touch the ring. Yeah. I'm old school. <laughs> I, yeah, <laughs> mate, I loved it. But what I what I loved as well, and obviously there was there was families there, there was kids there. There they were intrigued in the match. And don't get me wrong, I loved literally every single match. What I really enjoyed was I could hear wrestlers call spots, how they do it how it's put together. For me, that was absolutely fascinating. I don't get to see that with WWE. You kind of know what they're doing. But when, how hard, what I want to know from a wrestling, purely with your wrestling head on now, mm. how hard is it to call a match? You might be in with a rookie. You might be with an experienced guy. How does it go from planning it to calling it in the ring? Because I think, mate, I can't remember what I did about 20 minutes ago. <laughs> You've got to plan out a 35, 40 minute match. How on earth do you do that? Yeah, it could be, it is, that, that is, that's probably, I think, the hardest part about wrestling some you know in some ways um obviously you can learn the technical aspects of wrestling over a you know, number of months couple of years that, but trying to a put together a match that makes sense that tells a good story that's going to invest the crowd that's also intricate enough for this current you know fan base to be like whoa that you know because people you can't just do a basic paint by numbers good guy bad guy match anymore i mm -hmm. think people just find it incredibly tedious and boring very quick um people want to see those more intricate spots now and and they are you know it's all there they can almost be like dance routines sometimes and you, you're lining up like five or six moves in a row um and then you run straight into another sequence that's five or six moves in a row and you've all got to try and you've got to try and remember that and you've got to try and remember what the other guy's going to do he's got to try and remember what you're going to do um it, it very much does depend who you're working i'll be honest it depends who you're working and how long you've had to go over that match and there's there's not an awful lot of just calling it on the phone. It doesn't tend to happen. What, what you tend to hear, what you've heard in the ring, it tends to be people kind of calling the stuff that they've already planned. Yeah. Not, necessarily, not, not necessarily just calling. The, the, I'm, I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but it's just very mm. rare that someone will just go out and call a match anymore. Maybe, you know, sometimes little parts of it, but mostly 90% of that match has been yeah. laid out. Um, yeah, it was so hard. Don't get me wrong. I wasn't hearing they weren't shouting up here, but I've, yeah. I know what I'm looking for. Like, I'm old school. I Honestly, mate, when I watched your show, I, I, I was chatting to, to my mate, Chris, who I went with. That fascinated me because it's so good. Mate, I'd love to try and get I, – I, I could never do it. But just to be inside a wrestling ring, to know how you guys lean in, how you yeah. do certain things when you're in the corner, you know, you're, you're calling your spots and and – you're looking after your opponent. A lot of people don't, you know, a lot of people that watch wrestling, that you know, they say yeah. good guy, bad guy. The importance, I don't think people realise when they watch wrestling, the importance, you are literally, and you're, CJ, you'll know this, mate, you, you've had many injuries. You are literally putting someone's life in your hands, aren't you? Yeah, I mean, you saw it, right? You, I mean, mm -hmm. I look, maybe saying putting someone's life in your hands for that injury is, is a bit too much. <laughs> but, but, you know, it was a pretty serious injury and it, you know, it wasn't life threatening, but it was, and it was a very, very simple move. He took a drop kick. He took it. It's one of the most you know, mundane, regular, do it three or four times a match moves you'll ever see. He took a drop kick and it just so happened that the way he landed and the way that Warren landed on top of him, and then he popped his collarbone out and, you know, put him on the shelf for several months, affected yeah. his life as well. You know, it affected his job. Um, yeah. And, you know, I've seen people break their legs, break their wrists. Um, you know, I've done my ACL. I've done I've done the same injury that Forrest has done on both of my two shoulders. I've torn the tendons in my shoulders. I've, you know, I've, it happens. And it can happen from – you can do the most complex move where, you know, you get dropped in the back of your head or the top of your head or on your neck and you pop up and you, you feel okay. And then you do real basic – like a baseball slide or a drop kick or whatever, and all of a sudden you've caught your ankle or they've, you've landed awkwardly and you've broken a bone. You do a move that you've done, you know, a hundred times and never had an mm. issue. All of a sudden, you know, you've, you've, you've blown your shoulder out. But 
yeah and it is it's fine margins man it really is fine margins and i don't think a lot of people really appreciate that and you are totally putting your 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 life and your body in someone else's hands that's why trust is such a big thing in wrestling it's such a big thing you know i always i've always said like you don't always have to like the person that you're wrestling and there will be lots of people you don't like in wrestling loads of wrestlers <laughs> just don't get on there's a lot of egos in wrestling right but you've got to be able to trust that person when you're in the ring with them if you don't trust them that's it that's where it falls apart because you are putting your life in their hands and your body in their hands every time and that comes down to being able to you know, know that they've been trained properly and but be trained by someone who's, you know, got a good reputation and has trained them in a way that they will look after you and they will do the move safely because it's not always the case. Mm. Mm. Yeah, no, no, great answer, mate. Great answer. Sorry, Muncie, go on, mate. Yeah, with um like your wrestling stuff, do you get much time outside of wrestling? What what sort of stuff do you do outside of wrestling, like your other hobby sort of thing, or do you not get much time with it? Well, I, do, I get a bit more time now. <laughs> <laughs> Just walks the streets of Bournemouth. Yeah, when, you know, when I, I'll be honest. When I was when I was wrestling, there was there was almost no time for anything. And I'm a big football fan. I'm a huge football fan. Who do you support? West Ham. I'm a Hammer. So <laughs> good time yeah. to come on, mate. I'm a Tottenham fan. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. That, yeah. Let's not talk about that game. Uh, okay. Okay. We won't talk about football. It was pretty. It was pretty devastating. <laughs> It was yeah. we were just so poor, so incredibly, incredibly poor, which doesn't surprise me. This season, it just sums up. That's right. Muggs has got a guys go Rangers show, mate. It's all right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I didn't say to him, like, oh, why is that top? Because they look like a Rangers yeah, top. Yeah. I just didn't, you know, I didn't feel like he was going to be a Rangers fan, but you never know. But yeah, I'm, I'm a big football fan, and you know, when I was wrestling, I just never got to watch football. I just, um, you know, I was pretty much gone every weekend, if if not three times a weekend, then twice a weekend. It was very rare I ever had a weekend off. And, and I just, I, that was the one thing I really did miss more than anything. And that is something that I'm doing an awful lot more now is there's watching a lot more football again. Now that I'm not actually like having to drive around the country and spend sort of like, you know, do six hour round trips for shows on a Saturday and then another four hour round trip on a Sunday. And yeah. Um, and, and now I guess I'm just able to put a lot more, you know, time into the actual promotion of my show as well, which I guess, you know still wrestling but it's something that i just love so much and something that i i did struggle to do while i was actually you know mm. on the scene and wrestling myself um wrestling and football that's that's my life really <laughs> yeah, do you ever, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah cj do you ever um in business, obviously like i know the ignite guys i've seen some of the training stuff they put out you know it's wrestling school mate something you the route you might go down obviously passing on your knowledge mate i mean i've seen yeah. you wrestle i've seen obviously seen a few clips of you i watched you live obviously i know you're probably you're going to be heavily involved with the ignite wrestling pro guys helping out of the, the youngsters and passing on your experience is it something that you might look to do like a type of wrestling school and like get that going for yourself or you know is that something a bit further down the line i have thought about it and you're not the first person to ask a lot of people have asked me that um, even when I was currently wrestling, a lot of people were saying, oh, you know, you should think about doing some training. And I have done seminars and I have taken training at current wrestling schools. Um, and it's something I enjoy. I do enjoy doing it. And I have considered it. I have thought about it. I'll be honest with you, because it does feel like kind of the next natural step. Like I've got my own promotion. I would love to have a, a kind of training school off the back of it where, A, I could try and give something back to some of the you know the guys coming through but also it'd be a great place to kind of try out new talent as well and move them straight into the promotion and link the two up together you know the only things that put me off are i feel like there are so many good schools out there already it the market is kind of like you know, not saturated because that's you know maybe i don't think that's unfair because i'd say that would be to suggest there's too many of them but it feels like there's there's certainly enough really good schools out there like square one is a great training school and i, I used to train up there myself and obviously that's attached to ubw um, uh, and that's not too far from where I am either. Um, and it's just every promotion around does seem to have, you know, a, a, a training school attached to it. And I just, I don't know. I just wonder, I don't, I wouldn't want to take away from, from them for one. And also, um, you know, what could I offer that they weren't or aren't offering already, I guess would be the question, but, mm. um, it's certainly something I've considered. I think maybe if, yeah, if I could do it and locally in boring wood and if there was enough of um you know a, a, an audience in boring wood that, that would want to come in and be trained up to get onto ignite shows that's something i could definitely do i just um and you know that was the whole thing around running ignite 
in itself was just to give back to the local community. So if, maybe if I could open up a school for the local community, mm -hmm. if there was, if I thought there was enough people in that local area that would come to it, then that's something I could definitely do. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. Yeah, no, I think you'd be brilliant. Though. Sorry, man, you go on, mate. Oh, you want me to? <laughs> no, 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 sorry, no. I thought you were going to say so. Sorry, no, man, no. I thought you were going to say so. Mate. No, no, I no, go on. Now, uh, obviously, CJ, just uh, just wrapping up here, mate. What is uh, what does the future hold for you now? Obviously, you've mentioned Ignite. Uh, we've, we've talked maybe a little bit of wrestling school. Where do you want to? Obviously, you're professional. It's so it must be so hard, mate, because you're obviously going from a wrestler now to you know you're putting everything into Ignite. What does the future hold for you, mate? Mate, what's the what's the ultimate goal? I, I want my 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 goal is absolute. To, I want to grow ignite. I want to make it profitable. I want it. I want it to be at a place where yeah, I, we are you know regularly selling out shows. Um, ideally, you know, in advance of the show happening, I want to get to a point where I can do monthly shows. That's you know at the moment I'm doing every yeah. two months, every three months. I want to get to a point where we're doing a good couple of hundred every month, not every two or three months. I want to be able to, like you said, I want to be able to branch out to maybe a few other local areas around around um and you know make it a, a proper profitable business and be able to maybe bring in a few more guys per show because at the moment we have to keep the roster quite small because of budgets mm -hmm. i'd love to be able to bring in a few you know other than just giving back to the community what i really wanted to do with ignite was was try and get some of the younger newer guys on and give them kind of like a spotlight where where they're maybe not getting on that many shows Obviously, where I'm a bit limited at the moment is I can only have a finite amount of people on the card because the budgets are so small. So mm -hmm. I'd love to be able to grow it in that way and just give some people some more opportunities. Um, and yeah, and then and then yeah, I guess you're right. I would love to branch off and have my own little wrestling school off the side of that as well. I really help bring in some newer guys there and then feed them up into the promotion. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's that's the dream, man. We will have to see how it goes. At the moment, it's ticking along okay. Like I wouldn't say it's it's like going like amazing because we you know we're doing okay numbers but we're having to graft we are having to graft to get to those mm. numbers and that and that is kind of every two or three months is the appetite there to do it every month at the moment i'm not sure i think that probably would i've got to grow it a little bit outside of the local area for that i think and that's the next step and i, I need to work out the best way of doing that because i think we've got a good local fan base we've got a few kind of regular like regular wrestling fans that come in from just outside the area but I need to work out how to really grow that more kind of like nationally. Do you know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. That's that's the goal. Yeah, mate. Well, mate, if anyone can, I think you can, mate. Just speaking to you for the couple of times I've spoke to you, mate. I think, you know, you've got a good vision of what you want to do and how you want to do it, mate. And, you know, we're, we're, we always big you guys up on hitting the turnbuckle, yeah, mate. You, you do. Um, I appreciate you it. Do, um, honestly, I, I've really got in. It's only been like probably the last year, year and a half, really, since I've really got into the English wrestling scene. I know Munzi's yeah. the same. Hopefully me and Munzi are going to meet up. We're going to come to a show together, mate. We're going to, uh, we're going to come down and check us out. But tell, tell all our listeners, mate, obviously tell them where they can find you on all the socials, everything. Tell us where they can, uh, can reach yeah. out to you guys, get tickets, etc. So, you know, tickets to all of our Ignite shows, you can go to um, 96.eventbrite.co.uk. Um, next show, April 30th, tickets are on sale. Um, you can find us at Ignite Wrestling Pro on, you know, so on all social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Um, TikTok? No, oh, I can't TikTok. wait no TikTok. TikTok. Come on, son. I can't wait no. to see you on TikTok, mate. No, TikTok, man. Do you, look, I, I'm not ready to branch out to TikTok yet. Man. <laughs> do you guys have TikToks? Do you do, you do TikTok no, as well? Do you not? No, watch it. That's about it, mate. Yeah. You know. Like I, like I feel like but like maybe I, I, I thought about it, maybe I should, but I don't know. All you know, the young uh, hey, CJ, CJ, old, CJ this is a good. I'm this is a, old. I feel like I'm too old for TikTok. I don't mate, know, gen, genuine thing here. I can't. Oh, I'll have to find it. I'll send it to you. There's a wrestling promotion. All their shows are live on TikTok. You being serious? And and you, yeah, you know you get well. like yeah, mate. Honestly, I've got. I've, oh, I'll have a look. I was scrolling through a month or so ago, and you know, once you've looked at so many boobs and stuff, you know, you might find it. You might find a wrestling show. But honestly, <laughs> that was live wrestling show. I can't remember where it was. I think it was up north somewhere. It was literally a guy. He placed his tripod and stuff, and it was live on TikTok. I was like, yeah. I'm just watching a live wrestling show here. You know what I mean? And it had thousands of people like, oh, where are you based, mate? What you so you saying? Yeah, I'm not a marketing expert, mate, but. You know, it could yeah. be. Uh, you know, I know a guy. I know a guy with a YouTube channel, not sitting too far away from us as well, mate. You know what I mean? 
happy. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> it was. It's a great uh, social yeah, we media. Do live mate. Shows, man. We should link up and do a, like a live stream of, of a show. Yeah, That's, mate. Um, let's let's do it, mate. Let's That's... do it. I mean, we'd all. I'd gladly. I'd stand backstage with a bloody mic. Yeah, yeah, mate. You stick me. I love talking to CJ. You might have gathered that, mate. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll gladly help you. Honestly, social media. I've watched so much wrestling. I, I, was, I think there was one from America the other day. A local wrestling promotion was just on YouTube. I was like, oh, I'm gonna watch this. This is all right. Yeah, you know what I mean? they're in. A, there's they so much little... out there to watch now, and um, it, there's just unlimited amounts of amazing kind of independent promotions that you you can find on YouTube now. And it's trying to find a way to cut through that and be different and stand mm -hmm. out. And I, I do feel like you know the live stuff is something that places aren't really nailing or getting right. And I think that that could be something you don't see it. Do you? you don't really see British promotions doing live shows, even no, though, mate. No. In progress, you just or Rev Pro, you just don't see it. No one really have, does it. Yeah, you have to sign up to like I think Progress, the last one. No, IPW done a thing where you had to sign up for something to watch it a couple of days later, pay ten pounds, you can watch yeah. the whole show. Don't get me wrong, that's good. And they've had some great they had like Rhino and other great talent on it. But could you imagine Ignite, you know, live? I don't know if you if it's something you can do, I don't know the ins and outs of it. Live on TikTok, live on YouTube, just it's a way of getting getting yourself out there people might see and go oh, where's this ignite thing i stand in bournemouth i'll pop down That's you know it. yeah it just gets it gets the word out mate i'm no marketing expert but um <laughs> it's uh it's something to think about mate definitely man definitely no worries well munzi anything before we go mate no 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 nothing nothing else no Nothing. No, mate, I'm good. CJ, it's been, honestly, it's awesome to have you on, mate. I wish you every success. I know it must have been so hard from you going from wrestling all them years, mate. But honestly, you, you know, we've got such a good person now behind helping Ignite out, helping all the up and coming That's guys. Right. Honestly, mate, I love this. I love it. Uh, my mate, my good mate, Chris, so you know as well. He comes and watches a lot of your shows. Um, yeah. he, he, Chris. I was shout Chris, out. Yeah. He's a great guy. He's, he's always supporting yeah. me. Always supported me. He supported me when I was resting, and he's always supported Ignite. Okay. Yeah, a big shout. Yeah, and he's uh, yeah. mate. Honestly, he's he's with the old camera and all, mate. He's he. I know he's. I think he's working the Bedford show this Saturday. I think he's working the one in Milton. I think I'm meeting up with him on Sunday, maybe actually in uh Milton Keynes. Um. So yeah, he's a he's a great dude, mate. So he introduced me to uh Ignite, mate. Keep up the good work, mate. And we'll definitely 100 reach out to you, mate. We'll do something with you hitting the turnbuckle, mate. We'll do something. But thanks so much for coming on. Thanks, man. Thank you both. Thanks for having me. Uh, sure. No worries. Make sure you go and check us out on Twitter at HTT Buckle. We're back with our next podcast Friday. We've got we've got some very special guests coming up. I ain't going to say who, but trust me, we've got some former WWE champions coming on soon. But yeah, cheers, Muzzy. Cheers. See you later. Cheers, boys.